Alejandro by coming to the stage, Jordan Lee. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead and take a nap for these next four minutes. It's fine, I won't be offended. People, uh, people ask me all the time, they're like, how good, how good are you at comedy? And I'm like, I'm negative five dollars at a time good at comedy. <laughs> Like a one item minimum. <laughs> like, what does that mean? I'm like, I have to buy a drink in order to perform, you know? And uh, and when I get done, I usually have to buy everyone in the audience drinks so they don't get my ass. Yeah, that's, that's how good I am at this fucking fucking. Tip up, tip up. Don't buy two tall boys down the street and slam them in the alleyway while you're going last in the silver mic like I did. <laughs> Jordan Air Program. Jordan Air Program 69. 69th episode. It's about the new year. It's about 2023. It's about goals, New Year's resolutions. Porn, jerking off. My year in New York doing plays. <sighs> Shit. Way too intro fucking spective. Resolutions. What I want to do. Bingo, single flingo. Back to New Year's fucking year of the year. Okay, I got about an hour to move on. Welcome to the Jordan Lear Program. Happy New Year! Happy end of the year, whatever. Was it a good year? Was 2023 the best year of your life? Was it the most fruitful, fruitful in every way possible? Huh? Did you find love? Did you find wealth? Did you find happiness? Did you find the meaning of life in a new way? Or did you go so fucking far under and dipped out a fucking credit card, fucking loser fucking bill, and you convicted of crimes, and then you lost all your fucking friends, and you got your fucking divorce, and everyone left you, and you had a huge car accident, and I, I don't know. It could be any of those things. Maybe it's all those things. Happy New Year. Happy end of the year. Happy end of the year. Celebration of the end of the year. This is a reflective time. I keep lists of everything. I keep lists of every fucking thing I watch, every movie, every book I read, I, every uh, I don't know, parks I go to, you know, performances I see. I, I do it obsessively. I like logging shit, you know. I like I like reminiscing about times. That's you know, that's what this whole fucking thing is. That I'm doing. Okay. Got gotcha your goals for the new year. <laughs> What are your New Year's resolutions? And are they anything different besides getting hotter and getting more money? Because that, that, that's it. And sometimes that's one in the fucking same, you know? <laughs> My New Year's resolution. This is how I'm going to get hotter this year. And how I'm going to have more money and free time. This is how. Your shit's not working on January 1st, by the way. Unless you started, like, on November 1st, which I tried to do, and then a fucking dog bit me, and then wiggity wiggity wild so I'm gonna have a whole podcast about it later. Anyways, needless to say, this December, I've been hearing the Rocky music in my ear, going, da, 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 da. get back on the life going, sometimes holy shit accidents happen, and sometimes you're maliciously attacked in public. Anyways, that'll be a fucking... Five years from now, podcast probably. My year has been great though. There's been good things, huh? You know, I mean, I'm like everybody else. I'd like to quit fucking putting as much sugar in my body. Quit with the fast food, the any shit food, you know? This day I'm not gonna eat bread, you know? To this day, the only fucking New Year's resolution that I ever stuck by in my entire life that I still do. To this day, I started two years ago. I was like, this year, I'm going to start brushing my teeth with my left hand. And, um, you know, right brain, left brain, a little different thing. I was trying to balance my body out a little bit. And I still do it. I don't know if it fucking makes a difference, but I did stick with it, you know. I'm a lefty. 
when it comes to shoving shit in my mouth, you know. So as soon as I get here, I'm some fucking dick, you know. Well, I'm starting with the left hand. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. What are the? I, I really, you know, I do try to think. You know, I'm, I try to be a little simpleton like everyone else around here. I'm like, what do I want to change about my life? And it's always the same shit. It's like, quit putting poison in your body. Quit staring at your fucking phone all fucking day. Looking for the results to life. Oh, I posted a fucking thing. Did I get a million people sucking my dick yet? Fucking, no. No, stop. Just do it for fun. J-Frog. That's what I keep telling myself. You know. I don't know. Yeah, quit watching porn. My girlfriend won't quit asking me what kind I watch. She wants to know. I don't want to tell her. It's the kind with furries. I want you to wear a panda outfit, baby. Sorry. You had to find out this way through podcast form. I'm secretly a furry. And you know, it's more fucked up. They voted at the local schools on whether the kids could have a litter box. And I said no, because I just don't like kids to have fun. Even though in my own... I shouldn't even, you know. Watch furry porn. And I'm a bigot against furries. Is that, is that any other way to say it? You know? That's my kink. <sighs> Feels weird that I brought up a porn analogy and the fucking kids. Separate fucking, you know. And it's all a joke. I don't watch furry porn. I watch cuck porn. The kind where the guy, you know, sucks the dude's dick at the end. No, no, I don't. Maybe. No. I'm in Indiana. I'm bored. I don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> <laughs> Goals, you got to get hotter. You got to get more money. Okay, here's my biggest problem. I've been hot my whole life, and ain't nothing going to fucking change that. So no use in me trying to change anything in life, except eh, the money thing. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a fucking free spirit, dog. Don't need money to be hot right here. I just wear fucking the clothes. Oh, Stone Cold Steve Austin just fell down. Stone Cold stunned himself. I got my, my toys from L.A. I've been having fun with them. That's all you need in life, right? All right, your resolutions. Quit looking at social media all the fucking time. It, you know, I don't know what to say about that. It's the world. If I can, we didn't say that whenever the, you know, or, 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 rather, people did say that whenever the TV came out. They're like, you forgot to fry your fucking brain. And then some of those kids that don't watch TV are fucking weird, you know? I'm wondering if that's what, People think of me because I don't watch TikTok enough, you know? I'm trying to rock it. Anyways, what happened this year? This year, professionally, it was a very good year for me, I'd say. I was in New York. I lived most of the year in New York up until the l- l- strike. Yeah, I lived in New York until the strike in July, and then I've been chilling. And I, when I started the year, I did two plays. Right, I, I did like one full play. Okay, I did five women wearing the same dress, um, uh, written by Alan Ball originally, the guy that wrote American Beauty, and it was dope, man. And it was cool because it was a play I auditioned for in like, I, I think it was like December of the previous year, you know, just like a month before, and I didn't get it. And I'm I'm such a fucking cocky actor. I'm like, fuck you, I'm the best. I am the best. And anyways, the they went with somebody else and you know, whatever it's whatever. And, but then they called me back cause they had like rehearsals with the dude and it didn't work out. It wasn't for many reasons. It did not work out with this other actor that they originally chose. And they called me and they called me because, uh, one of the other actresses in the play I had met at a different audition. And I just, she told me that her and her husband like had this theater company there uh part of and uh i just thought it was dope and we oh we practice lines and whatever she referred me to the shit and they were like hey my wife the dude's like hey my wife said you were you're a good actor i'm like you're goddamn right i am and he goes we saw that you actually did audition for it too and i'm like yeah where's the fucking rock anyways i got it five women wearing the same dress and it's the best uh pretty much the best play you know experience it was off broadways and queens that I've had. I mean, I did the zoo story the year before in LA and that was like, that's a crazy fucking awesome role, the role alone. But going to New York and having that goal, like, you know, I've, I've got a lot of friends that have, you know, been acting a long time and they, they've just never done a play in New York. They've just, 
it just never happened you know it take and and it, granted it didn't wasn't like a high paying gig or anything and it was a lot of fucking work so there's where that balance is where whew, made me i needed a break for a couple of months it was so fun not not for any negative reason just because it was like a fucking toll on the old brain you memorizing all this dialogue and making it good acting acting you know and that was badass, dude. Five women were wearing the same dress. I'll put a, I'll put a hey, clip in. <laughs> well, what are you going to do now? Give me your ID bracelet? If you really like me, you can carve my initials into your arm. <laughs> what? My next door neighbor in seventh grade, she did that so she would have her boyfriend's initials and, and this, like, scar on her arm. And I just, oh, I thought that was so ultimate, you know? That girl like you so much, she would mutilate herself. <laughs> <laughs> I will never like you that much. <laughs> Somewhere in here. It's a, it's a, the whole thing, my whole scene is on this YouTube, though. Um, I don't know. I post all my shit. So is the zoo story. Um, just fucking Google Google Jordan Lear with two E's if you give a shit, if you're still 10 minutes in. That was one of the best creative experiences I've ever had in my life, ever. And certainly in this past year. It was so fucking fulfilling. I'm so glad I listened to Bill Alderson, my teacher in L.A., when I was so burnt out on Los Angeles and all that shit. And I was like, dude, I'm fucking going back to Michigan. Fuck this shit. And he's like, why don't you go to New York? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know where the fucking go. I don't, so, I don't have any fucking money. And I figured it out. Or some really nice people figured it out for me. And because of it, that, that was the second play I did because I did one earlier. But this one was much more substantial than the other one um just i don't know and it's for me for the character the part you know the, the lines you know awesome what else did i do oh and then i did another i did like a table read like a live reading but it was like acted out it was like we didn't memorize lines you know it, it was kind of a weird hybrid where we held the fucking script in front of us your boy like got off book because i like you know fucking rocking with that i made the director nervous because she didn't uh she didn't think I was going to memorize the lines. I was like, it's what I do, man. And um, the Haddonfield 8, it was like an original script that was like being workshopped. And that that was cool. That was cool. That was a, what the fuck was that? That was at some snobby ass New York conservatory. AMDA, American Dramatic Arts. I don't know. Everyone I fucking meet that's been there, heard of it. They call it Scamda. Like all the conservatories, man, I i mean, this is the year that I posted up outside of fucking Juilliard and because they've got Juilliard over the Lincoln Center where you can just go for free and watch plays, which I'll, I'll get into in a fucking hot minute, All every fucking play I watched. I used to post up out of Juilliard this year and I was like, fuck Juilliard, <laughs> fuck them. I'm so like, I want to start a fight with those fucking kids, fucking... Jonathan Lee West here, famed actor, artist extraordinaire. Here, fucking Juilliard again, mate. Just rolled the fuck out of bed in case you can't fucking tell. Fuck Juilliard. It's kind of bored. I just love every time I'm over here in the air, I'd like to shit on this fucking acting school. It might be all right, mate. I think back in the fucking day, fucking 60s, 70s, back when it was fucking starting it up, mate, maybe they were fucking teaching some craft back then, but now it's just fucking money, though. Fucking put you in debt. I don't know, mate. I've studied. I've done the shit. I've done the shit. Okay? I've acted with the fucking Juilliard Fox. I've met them all. I've been across from them. Shaking in the fucking boots. Can't even get a fucking word out. I get it. Fuck me. I think you need Juilliard to learn how to fucking act. I know how to fucking act, mate. This shit? It's fucking God-given. God-given talent, okay? God-given. Pan-driven. The rest I found myself, you motherfuckers. Fucking A. I know what I don't, and I know what I do. Let me tell you something. You know, fucking cop. That's acting. West, bored, out. Just cried inside the library, watching the play. Other desert cities made me cry. Very good. Still. Fuck you, Lord. Oh, fuck those kids doing the fuck. I met some of them because I went to... Dude, I, there's enough free shit. If you look hard enough, you can find actors, you can find places. And uh, if you're watching this, you want to know, I'll tell you some free shit in New York. You can find just as good a shit. Where I fucking saw Juilliard people coming to check like this shit out where we do readings together and stuff and 
practice scenes and workshop she- scenes and these Juilliard kids fucking wanted me to fucking join their little actor group and they wanted to play the fucking mirror game in some fucking studio. Oh God. You know what the mirror game is where you look at each other and you like, you hold your arms out and you like mirror what they're doing. And I'm like, can we just look at the text and, and add fucking subtext to the motherfucking script as I'm acting along and find it along the way and fu- and just working my fucking character through like truth and imaginary circumstances and have things that I know that I want and I need and set these circumstances for my fucking character and live with the script and let it fucking flow like a river. The Meisner motherfucking method. Or as you call it, or as I call it, or as we all know as fucking imagination. Why am I screaming about Juilliard? Ah, it has nothing to do with me. I hate those fucking kids, though. I don't know. I need to get off that. Whatever. They're staying. No, I'm staying on it. I'm staying on it. I need them. I need them. They're my fucking Vince McMahon. That's I'm stone cold, bitch. Coming back to New York, and I'm going to have a act off with you guys. <laughs> I met these actors in New York, and I was like, I told them I was the fastest actor in America. And they go, what are you talking about? I go, yeah, I've been timed. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking with you. They were kind of worried at first. I was like, your agent doesn't like keep your time? <laughs> Ah, uh, did that make any sense to anybody else but me? That whole fucking rant. What else did I do? I took a UCB class at the Upright Citizens Brigade. It was the level three, the UCB. Man, I've always had a fucking angst about I don't know comedy classes, mostly because I you know I came up through stand up. And I here's the thing: I like classes. To to be fair, like I do, I I, I like acting class. I like a lot of class, you know. But comedy is something. That's uh, it's you. You can't teach it. Certainly not stand up in a class. I mean, there. I don't know if you fucking had to like teach someone, but that's the whole thing. Anyone you have to teach wouldn't fucking whatever. Upright Citizens Brigade. They've got this like it's the cottage industry of improv where people go through to try and get on SNL. It's like two schools left in the world: UCB and uh, Groundlings. There's also like Second City, and there's some other off versions and there's the pit and nyc but the main one when i fucking have started was ucb and i took it in la i took two levels of it and i thought and oh okay i I feel many things about it it was nice and i and actually i like i like the class i like the form i like the way they slow it down a little bit for you and it, it really makes sense okay the crowd not my crowd okay the very pc which is uh, fine that that's fine honestly clean cut let's fucking clean cut it up you know they're very like they they're very clear about punch up don't punch down which means you gotta fucking make fun of people that are of higher status than you physically or socially or metaphysically fucking whatever and you can't you know you can't make fun of people with anything any disabilities or any problem you know and that's fine that is fine however their shit is so centric towards those issues, though. Like, that's if you go to those shows, that's actually what hits is whenever they push the line sexually, except if it's like in the right way. And I don't, or not even sexually, like, you know, punching down, punching up. But it's just like, I don't know. Anyways, I just never been my fucking vibe. And I've, and I've had a, whatever, you know, I'm such a contrarian. I have a hard time fitting in in any single spectrum, even in places I do fit in. But well, whatever. What am I fucking saying? I took level fucking three at UCB, okay? And I'm going to – and oh God, they fucking hosed me big time on this thing. It was fine, except they're, like, coming back after pandemic. And it's supposed to be, like, a 16-person class. And they only had four of us in there. And that's cool because you get more reps. But then it's, like, it was so inco-fucking-herent. Because you you need six people just to really even do their form of improv for the most part. Their herald. I don't fucking know. I was a little disappointed with them. Once again, the vibe was like, ugh. You know. It was fine. I, I, I went to some other jams, they call it, which is like open mics for improv people. I went to a bunch of jams. And that's cool. And I, hey, I met dope motherfuckers there too. I don't know. It's just like darky. I don't know. Like I'm gonna take like I'm gonna take their level four next year, but just because I I have a free credit 
that I forgot to use for three because I'm an idiot. I just signed up and paid for it because I had a little extra dough for a moment. And then, so I'm going to take level four, which is the last thing. And then after that, you're supposed to like audition to be a part of their like cult to try and get on fucking maybe a referral for SNL or some shit. And I'm not doing that. I am. I mean, maybe just to like do it, but I like, I don't even want to be, I don't know. It's not my, it's JK Simmons. Simmons Simons would say not my tempo. Oh, look at that. I always play. I'm trying to play old podcast during my podcast and I'm fucking mad. Cause this hat I'm wearing, this old one is this old Chevy hat that I lost. Cause Ryan, the fucking cable viewer trashed my fucking old place in LA that I let go of. And it's fine. Cause I don't worry about possessions, but God damn, that hat was fucking awesome. Fuck, Ryan. Uh, happy New Year, buddy. I hope you're doing okay. Anyways. I took UCB. And that was cool. My buddy Casey and, and uh, his wife, Navi, they came out to see my show. I did. Hey, man, I went into Not only did I do UCB, I forgot about this. I signed up for, like, an improv team again. Yeah, I met this dude, a really nice guy, Edison. He really, really nice dude. He asked me to join his, like, improv team team of people like you hire a private clo- coach you know everyone gives this guy 100 bucks so hopefully you get 20 you know people or so and that's five bucks or, or 10 10 and 10 you know that's reasonable anyways i did that for a minute and it's it's, it's tough i mean they're great it was cool man but i like i really gave it the college try you know if you for those aren't who aren't into entertainment industry you know, it's like there's acting and there's stand up and, you know, there's music and and a lot of people dibble and dabble in both. But it's like it's central to like one like you can go deep down one rabbit hole like stand up has its own cult of like the comedy store or, you know, if you're in New York, it's the cellar and the Carolines and and the mics and and then improv, whatever. They've got their cult and it's kind of shifting. Actually, this fucking UCB to tell you the truth. It's starting to go by kind of by the fucking wayside and replaced by the pit NYC, which is dope. They got jams like seven nights a week. It's the same shit. Most people. Anyways, I'm not fucking doing an ad for the pit. I have a lot of feelings about comedy and form. And I was doing improv for a minute. Improvisers. That is a different fucking like psychology of comedy. That is a different. That is so they're so they're so different, man. Here's the. Here's the biggest difference between stand-ups and improvisers. Um, stand-ups have mental illness. <laughs> yeah. And improvisers just aren't funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. All right. Everyone here took the core classes at Magnet. <laughs> no fucking shit on Magnet, man. Fuck it. These people are nice. Yeah, they're nice. They're nice. They're nice. They come from upper, you know, upper class families, so they can take care of their mental illness. They're so nice. They're. <laughs> Things. Um, what else did I do? I finished my first play. I I did. I have I've wrote many stories in my life. I've wrote many screenplays. I mean, I you know, I've started a ton. I've I think I've solidly finished like four or five screenplays finished. You know, and then like two like. TV shows, you know, written a f- fucking lot, you know, stuff you go back and rewrite. But I never sat down to write a play before. And I was on New York. I was in New York. I was on the fucking, you know, theta bug, theta game. And I was like, dude, I was giving myself like a New York theater education. Like I would, I would ride the train. I would, uh, I would like listen to YouTube videos about like literally the history of theater starting from Greek times going forward and the, the, the dark ages and how, you know, you know, uh, Christianity got involved and wiped the shit out. They got of stuff, bring it back. Everything. Like I would, I was in fucking theater history mode. So the next story I came up with, I was like, making a play, gonna be artsy. It's different. How do you fucking pull this off? How do you fucking? And I'm obsessed with the idea. That is also a part of my my New Year's goal. Whatever you fucking have, you uh, putting on that play, man. I wrote this play called Love Is an Al Gore Rhythm. And um, it's all about my, like, it's all inspired by a ton of experiences that I had or heard about in New York this first three months I lived there in 2022. 
and uh very exciting so i I did that there's a there's an accomplishment for me baby um and i started writing a few few more and i don't know i think i'm yeah yeah to how to finish the other one i'm like 60 pages deep on my second one so uh, i get the bug got the bug for the theater excited for that oh what oh and i started filming my first feature film i'm gonna make a fucking i'm making this mockumentary you know feature thing about myself it's very fucking meta. It's like I'm interviewing myself. It's called Sex, Drugs, and Open Mics, and it's about me developing my first stand-up comedy special. And it's, uh, you know, when I say special, I, you know, I had a 10-minute version. It's also available if you Google the shit on Comedy Cube. Um, but I'm going to do a full one. I think, you know, hour, eh, you know, at least a cool 30. I'm going to make a feature film. And there's going to be about 20 minutes of stand-up in it. And I think in that 20, in making that 20, I'm going to actually shoot like a an hour type deal. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Fuck, who wants to listen to stand-up for an hour from one person? You better be fucking good, man. I don't know. Maybe I'll do like fucking 30 of material and try and mix in shit with people I plant in the audience. <laughs> stand-up's hard. Fucking A. But those are our goals. I'm going to try and put up that play. 2024, I'm going to quit watching as much uh, cuck and furry porn. I'm going to feature film. Did I, did I say that? Oh, yeah, I'm going to finish I'm gonna finish making that feature film and make the stand-up special. And I'm going to get hotter. I'm going to get hotter. My kids are going to have nicer clothes and they're going to be better at sports. That's Dude, if you're like a fucking parent right that's all you want you're like i want to make more money and i want my kids to kick more ass at sports that's all i give a fuck about and my fucking if i get some side pussy a little bit that'd be fucking great my fucking wife knows i need it she wishes i could get it she's encouraging me too i just got no fucking game she makes fun of me every fucking night Ugh. get off the social media quit watching furry porn go to new york Write a play. Get your kids nice clothes. Make sure they're better at sports. Make sure they're whooping ass at sports. Otherwise, you're a fucking pussy too, bitch. You're a fucking pussy too, bitch. And let me tell you, it's fine. Who cares? AI's gonna take over. Sports ain't gonna mean dick. Maybe they'll mean everything. It's all we'll have left is good old flesh on flesh. Spank, rank, rank. But you'll watch the fucking... They're watching eSports. Okay. I have no idea. I miss Y2K. I'm a Y2K baby. You know what I mean? You remember 1999 when they're fucking lining up for generators? You know what I mean? Because all the the fucking nuclear warheads were going to go off because the, they didn't have the digits right or some shit and the coding and switching to fucking 1999 to 2000. I was pumped, man. I don't know why. It just felt like... I was so poor it was going to benefit me somehow. <laughs> Bring back Y2K. Y2JLP. I don't know. That was my year. My New Year's resolutions are to smoke crack only even in the evenings. Yes. Yes, my, my New Year's... Re- let's take that again. My New Year's resolution is to smoke crack only in the evenings. I'm only going to have five mental breakdowns per month. And I'm going to learn how to paint. (sighs) You got to quit watching furry porn. Okay. I looked up world history events. I was like, what happened in current events this year? And uh, there was the Hollywood strike, which you shouldn't give a shit about. It's funny that that came up, but they didn't bring up the auto worker strike, which is like way more important. The year of the Eras Tour. It was the year you realized once again that all your friends that don't like music fucking love Taylor Swift. What is these motherfucking people who've never listened to music, like people that don't even play music in their car? They're like, I love that. I'm spending like thousands of dollars on music. I spend way more m- money than I do on music per year. I think I did get a Spotify account this year, so I spent like 40 bucks before I canceled it. 
I bought a guitar for 200 bucks. There's people that don't fucking like music. They spend $1,000 like that to dress up and take a picture. And I respect you. You're my friends. A lot of my friends and your wives ever even, you know, I'm shitting on you. I'm shitty, shitty, shitty. Yeah, I bet I would have for if I was invited. You know what? Some fucking lady wanted to take me to a John Mayer concert, and I'm like, respectfully, lady, I don't know you that well. Don't even remember her fucking name. I would have saw John Mayer, though. <sighs> Britney Spears' book came out. What is that? You know, people, you got to decide, you know, because it came out and people were like, we hate Justin Timberlake. He manipulated our or some shit. I don't even know if that's true. But then you see fucking NSYNC lining up reunion style at the Emmys, the Grammys, or whatever, when they give taste with, I don't know. And everyone's like, we fucking love NSYNC. It's like, I don't know. You better figure it out if you want to kick him out and make Lance just the lead singer. I don't know. Lance is great. Is Jake Gyllenhaal gay? <laughs> For some reason, when I Googled current events this year, it brought up Jake Gyllenhaal comes out as gay. And then I clicked on the thing, and it didn't say anything about him being gay. And I don't care whether he's gay or not, other than I want to suck his dick. And I wish I was him. And I think he's a fantastic actor, and he should have been in Mighty Ducks. Um, and I just want to know if he's available or not. And is he? But also, it's a bit of a mind fuck because I've based my whole life around being Jake Gyllenhaal, and I thought he he banged chicks, and so I've, I'm I'm straight, so it's gonna be hard for me to. Uh, but I'm in Indiana, and I gotta go to some reverse conversion therapy. You know they have conversion therapy if you're gay. I need the shit that makes you gay. So I bet it's ran by the same people. I bet Mike Pence and the fucking leaders of South Bend could fucking get me some fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be gay. Give me the verse, reverse convert. Give me the v reverse convert. The UFO guy came out this year. That was the big fucking thing. No one gives a shit. No one cares. The people that care barely fucking care. David Grush, he had the Senate hear hearing with the Navy pilots. They're like, yeah, we see the shit all the time. Here's the video. Shit disappeared. You can't understand how it fucking moves. What the fuck is it? You know, Senate's like this. That was the big fucking alien shit this year. Oh, man. I don't know if we deserve to be saved, but we need it. <laughs> That's all I can say about the aliens. Yo, aliens, I get it. We got to figure this out on our fucking own, and maybe I'm a, you know, part of that with myself. I know I ain't fucking am, but... Can you do something about this bullshit thing that we're doing? Because it is fucking horseshit bullshit. With the fucking way everyone's getting scammed on algorithms and insurance premiums and fucking fake workplace relationships and being chained to your fucking job and a desk for too fucking long and obsessed with buying fucking shit you don't fucking need and you really don't even want and it makes your life fucking worse to spend with fucking people you fucking hate what is this whole thing because there's got to be a better way anyways that's my 2024 i just can't wait for fucking deadpool 3 to come out and if they push it to 2025 i'll just wait for them <laughs> in my mind i just keep i'm like i just want to deadpool 3 Ugh. I got introspective about my life this year, whether I, I wanted to still audition for people's shitty TV shows and movies, and I'm still back and forth between that. I'm mostly deciding that I'm going to fucking just throw it out there to play ball, but I'm, I'm pretty much going to focus on my shit, my films, my exact goals I told you about. I'll toss getting a new agent on top of that, because my L.A. ones... Times have uh, times have changed. I ain't got no more LA connections, and I don't fucking want them either. So, but Deadpool three, I will not give up. I will still stand in line with the Simpletons for a Marvel movie. I will fucking be there, and I want Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman to jack me off. What? Only if Jake Gyllenhaal's in there is Mysterio.
Never raise that guy, Shep. Uh. What else besides the resolutions? List it, list it. All right. Now it's time for what this whole fucking year is about. It's one of those things where I don't care if everyone looks at it or not. It's like my dick. It's my lists. I keep track of every fucking thing I watch, everything I read, everything I do, pretty much. And I got this idea, I, I will say, I first got this idea from Steven Soderbergh. I saw the, the director of uh, Sex, Lies, and Videotape, and Contagion, and Aaron Brockovich, badass motherfucking director. He, he, he kept a track one year of like everything he watches, and I think he still does, and he puts it out there. And, I don't know, he, he does it a little differently, and um, I've done it for like the past, God, I've done it for like six or seven years, and I think I have pictures of them all. I do it on my phone, and then I was doing a thing where I, I, I like would write it out in notebook form. Well, whatever. Okay, here's the fucking lists, okay? In no particular order, but, it's, you know, there's books, there's movies, there's plays. I did all sorts of fucking shit. I'm a download machine. This is part of the Jordan Lear program. This is what you program yourself with. This ain't gonna, you know, what they're gonna have an AI that they're just gonna have go through this list and do all this shit, and it's gonna be me, you know? All right, books. I didn't read books for fucking dick this year you know because i read plays i read plays and we'll get that in a minute but the books i did read i read great expectations by charles dickens and i liked that book because you know it kind of reminded me of catcher in the rye had a cool flow to it It wasn't it was i think it's a short novel technically it wasn't too fucking long it was dope, and Charles Dickens' Tale of Two Cities sucks, in my opinion, so that always makes me scared whenever I get into dick territory. But um, I do like A Christmas Carol. I don't know. I read that. Then I picked up Atlas Shrugged by Anne Ryan. Is that her fucking name? And I did not finish this book because it fucking sucks, dude. It's so long. It's on some best of list for it's like an apocalyptic future society where everything fucking sucks. And I'm like, yeah, dude. And... It's, I don't know, every time someone reads it, they're like, oh, this is like how life is now. And I'm like, yeah, fucking, that's not interesting. Not at all. Anyways, didn't finish it. I believe on putting down books if you fucking hate them. Movies, whatever, you know, you shouldn't. I also believe in sitting through them. There's some, I do watch a lot of shitty movies and kind of get something out of that. But, I don't know. Then I read The Metamorphosis. Was this fucking Kafka? Is that him? I like this book. This was cool. It was fucking weird. It's one of the it gets talked about a lot. It's weird. It's about it's kind of trippy the way it's written. It's sort of like a guy who's turning into a cockroach and his family's outside the door. And he's got this illness or some shit or it's it's weird and it makes you think about what is the deep meaning of it and I don't know. The, it's about the change into the shit and I don't know. You know this one you could have a whole fucking semester about college classes. I liked it though. Oh, and then I tried reading In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, and I did not, uh, I liked it, I liked the way it was written, but it was like a thriller, and they gave away the ending very soon, so I didn't like it. And that's all that I finished in 2023 for books. Now, I am 160 pages deep on Oil by Upton Sinclair, which I've, I've chatted a little bit about, I got it right over here, Oil, which There Will Be Blood by Paul Thomas Anderson, Daniel Day-Lewis is based on. Uh, this is fucking dope, man. And it only enhances the movie. The movie only enhances the book. And they're very different than each other. They're very different in ways that are great. That makes it a fun... I'm not... Dude, no, none of the story is given away for me. Definitely not. It's like they're similar characters in ways, but it's a very different story than the movie. And I'm learning about the Old West in 1917 and fucking oil drilling. And dude... America and like the backbone of capitalism and how this shit fucking it is a good read I expect to be smart in 2024 you little whore all right 
That's it for books. Maybe I'll read more books. Books. Maybe I'll read more books. I read a lot of plays. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what... I'm not sure which way it's going to go this year. Then, oh, okay, I read two comic books. I read Spider-Man 2099 and Flashpoint because those comic book movies were coming out. That was cool. There's a life... I, I see myself bearing myself in comic books more. I always want to read the old Ninja Turtle ones. Maybe one, one year I'll fucking sit down and do that. I went to, I guess, only two museums. I meant to go to more. I feel like I went to more museum-type places, but I guess only the American Museum of Natural History in New York and the Museum of Moving Image in New York. I went to the Bronx Zoo. Does that count as a museum? It's fucking dope. Um, all right, poetry. Let's get into poetry. All right. I've never sat down and read poetry before. So I decided to put some in my fucking brain. And I got to be honest, a lot of times I'm just sitting there and doing it and it doesn't stick. You don't even realize what you fucking just read. And that's fine. I gave it my try. But some of it I did like. And I got started reading it because I got Val Kilmer's uh, book of poems, Val Kilmer the Actor. Yeah, he writes it like as a hobbyist, you know. But he had this collection of poems, and I just thought that was cool. I don't know. I'm just like, what I do? I like dabbling in art, no pressure. And his shit said you should read poetry out loud. So that's like my MO. If I get poetry, like I sit down by myself and and read it out loud, you know. Try to have a lyrical flow or some, you know, you know. Trying to get my literature score up in jeopardy, people. Is that so, so fucking bad? Val by Val Kilmer. Then I read Kurt Vonnegut, Vonnegut, If This Isn't Nice, What Is, which actually is it's speeches, but some of them are kind of like poems and it's written in poetic form. It's a lot of speeches at uh, college graduations and different ceremonies, basically where he's telling everyone to quit fucking killing each other, but he is uh, hilarious. The dude that wrote Slaughterhouse-Five, Kurt Vonnegut, that is a very good, nice read that really, every every poem Every excerpt you read in that, you're like, fuck yeah, dude. This guy gets it, and he's funny about it. I like KV. Then I read T.S. Eliot, Selected Poems, because, I don't know. Is T.S. Eliot supposedly one of the greatest poets of all time? That's I don't know. That's what I do. I just like, who's the best fucking poets? And uh, I don't know. I can't remember hardly anything. I remember he had one called The Wasteland that I think is referenced in... Uh, fucking Oppenheimer by Christopher Nolan maybe some other ones is that the one go fucking darkly into that quiet light or go do not go do not go quietly into that dark light to that bright light I don't fucking know didn't hit with me also read some Emily Dickinson selected poems great American poet I think she's American Emily Dickinson I can't remember what a fucking one of those was about either but I read that she lived in her house forever. I did read that. Like, she'd never fucking left her house. Like, just fucking wrote poems inside all day for her whole life. And then, something I've been meaning to pick up for the past ten years is Dante's Inferno. Fuck yeah, man. The Italian poem about going to hell. The divine comedy, you know. I read part one, Inferno. Very good, and we'll get to it later because I also saw a play where uh, this shit was that was all about Dante's Inferno. Dude, I read this shit, and I will be honest, like a lot of it I didn't understand, but I read Wikipedia as I'm reading it, so I can kind of keep up, and it's cool because I figured out I don't know, this isn't a report on Dante's Inferno. I fucking liked it, man, and I learned how a lot of it's about history and mythology blended into two as he's going through these circles of hell. Anyways. I started trying to learn a little Italian this year, and my goal is I'm going to read Dante's next fucking part, Purgatory, part two, and I'm going to try and read some of it in Italian, and hopefully by the time I get to fucking heaven, whatever that one's called, Dante's, is it called Dante's Heaven? Paradise, that's what it is. I'm going to read it in in Italian. Yo sono... Parlo Italiano. Is that fucking right? Oh, man, I can't speak a lick of it. I've been doing it for months. I can't parlo a lick of it. (laughs) Non parlo Italiano. 
Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, me a person. I'm lost. Oh, me a person. Me a person. I'm lost. Me a person. Me a person. Anyways, all right. That was poetry. I don't know. I started writing down fucking parks, but there's no fucking reason. I went to a bunch of parks in New York and I didn't write them down all over Central Park and whatever. I started writing down J Hood, Wright Park. Literally, I'm not even going to fucking list this shit. I saw the UP, though. That was badass. I saw the Upper Peninsula for the first time in my life. My girlfriend, Sammy. That was fucking hell yeah, dude. I was like thinking I had to go to Europe to see some badass shit. Fuck that. Just go drive six hours north. It wasn't even as beautiful as it could possibly be. And it was fucking badass, baby. Music and live performances. I saw <laughs> it says Adrian's Band in Bushwick. It, oh, yeah. I saw him in Manhattan as well. Uh, who I lived with in New York, my friend's parents, their friend had a son who's in a badass band. And he's a really great bass player. He's a, he's a great guitarist, everything, musician, period. But he played uh, bass for like two bands, so good. And I can't remember the venues. They were like bar shows. My total type of fucking show. Oh, you know what I don't have listed here is I saw two uh, salon performances. Uh, no, not two. I just one. I saw like a, a private uh, piano player salon performance in a Soho salon. It's like a lodge with a fucking hundred year old, you know, grand piano and this real professional pianist. And you're just sitting there with wine and 20 people while she's fucking playing. You're like sitting in this living room. So I'm like fancy New York shit. Fuck. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't write that down. Cause it happened. And I saw the New York Philharmonic twice in New York. Cause they were putting on free shows in the park. I saw them in Van Cortland park and also in Central Park, and they were fucking mind blowing. The first show in particular, because I was closer. God damn, that's like <laughs> that's some music, doggy. Also, I saw Rob Schneider at the fucking Elkhart Theater, <laughs> <laughs> which the hey, that theater was beautiful. I don't know in that little downtown area, like it looked nice. Um, all the people are god awful, terrible pieces of shit people, and. uh Rob Schneider, like, his show was great. I was really impressed that he, like, did his show. He really did. And he did his show, and he respond. He did the voices that everyone did from his movies, you know. You can do it. Um, <laughs> The crowd was, like, insufferable. Like, they were just, I just hated the way they laughed. You could just tell that they were pretty racist. <laughs> One lady was screaming that gay marriage is illegal in Indiana, which it is, you know. And uh, so that was weird, just the crowd. I would love to see him in a different anywhere fucking else. But I didn't see Rob Schneider. What else? All right. All right. Now it's into plays I saw. Okay, man. I saw Cat on a hot tin roof on on off-Broadway. Technically, it was off-Broadway. It was right on 47th Street, uh, I think the St. Clement's Theater, you know, but it's like tech. It was technically off Broadway. It was the first time Tennessee Williams, fucking Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, roof has been off Broadway, and uh, it was bad. It was real bad. The dude who fucking dude was like filling in his understudy for the granddaddy dude, and uh, big or big daddy. It was fucking rough production. People fucking missing their lines. I didn't like the. I bet if they did it perfect, I wouldn't have liked it. I didn't like the way they did it. You know, I'm not a huge fan of that play. Tennessee Williams kind of fucking gets to be a bit much. I saw Time Biter, which my friend was acting in and helping produce. My friend uh, Clayton uh, Clayton Smith, dude, this was right on McDougal Street, and th you know this is off Broadway to to the max, but it was done in the best way. Like this is how I, I don't know, probably it couldn't have been a ton of people. I feel like it was less than fifty people. But it was so, the design is like little black box theater. Dude, really good play. Look for that. About It was trippy about time travel and this actress and shit. And she's trying to like figure out which way her life could have went. It's pretty, it's amazing. Cried. Brought me to tears. Uh, and then I saw the greatest thing I've ever seen on stage in my entire fucking life. Peter Pan goes wrong. That was great. And that was Broadway. 
Broadway. I saw it with my mama and my niece. Dude, that was bad the fuck ass. So funny. So incredible between the wardrobes, the songs, the fucking special effects. Just like the best thing I've ever seen. Man, I, sh- I should go back and do like a play report just on that, actually. Because I wasn't fucking doing the potty pot at the time. That was great. Then I saw Twelfth Night, which um, my friend uh, Ashley Gage that acted with me in Five Women Wearing the Same Dress, she acted in this. This was also on McDougal Street. Was this at the same theater that I saw Time Biter? I think it was, and maybe in a different level, in a different room, but the same one. I think so. Now I fucking think about it. That was amazing. That's Shakespeare, you know? That's shaking it the fuck up, you know? I love that. And it was done well. It was funny. It was done in a way you could follow what was going on. Going on. It was wonderful. Um, and then I saw A Christmas Carol last, uh, two weeks ago. I saw a stage play reading of A Christmas Carol at the Three Rivers Community Theater, which I've never been into in my life. And I finally went into the theater. is fucking beautiful man theater is like great and it's an incredible space especially for this region to have um and the play the 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 reading you know was was amazing everyone crushed it the crowd was unruly i will say that there's fucking kids and adults making all sorts of fucking noises in this tiny thing it was so stressful that's how i finished up my performances of the year baby all right then what is it into? Okay. Plays I read. I went I went to New York. I went to learn about if plays were boring or not. And I get hyper obsessive and I fucking read everything I can. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't uh, go through the traditional theater history um, growing up or growing up in college. I did, I did the film history and I've always been like a movie guy. So... In New York, it's like, let's get this fucking theater on. You know, let's learn about this shit. And, um, dude, I, okay, what do I got here? Yeah, I started, I've, I did the Greek ones. Sophocles. Yeah. I ran to Antigone, Oedipus the King, Electra. I don't remember fucking dick that happened in this shit. Aristophanes. I read Lysistrata. I, dude, I can barely say this shit. But, but I read it because I was like, what is this? You know, I want to, if this is where theater came from, let's, I'm going to read the, these plays and, I, I know I read interpretations of them or the wiki version and you saw how they're, you know, a lot of these plots are kind of recreated over and over again of all things, you know, and, and smart fucking directors, they reference it. So whatever, I read those. Then I read Neil Simon, The Odd Couple, Barefoot in the Park, Come Blow Your Horn. I, I like writing three. If I can, I like getting three of an author. That's where you feel like you really grasp them. You know, Neil Simon, that's all good comedy, man. I'll get into that because I watched some of his shit, too. And I watched Sam Shepard, who I've always said he's one of my play. Oh, here she fucking comes, dude. She's coming in right the fuck now. Quit asking me what kind of porn I watch. Quit asking me about the cuck and furry porn. Invasion of my privacy. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Had to pause. Coming back. Girlfriend caught me doing something way worse than watching porn. She caught me podcasting. (laughs) Is there anything more embarrassing than holding a microphone, talking to a video? And she knows how many views this gets on average. Less than a hundo. Let's be honest. If it gets nine, we're fucking excited. And she sees me making it. All right. The list. I was talking about plays I read. Sam Shepard. Dude, I was talking about, like, Sam Shepard. He's one of my favorite playwrights because I, I love True West. But I read the rest of his shit and it made me feel weird because it's all about incest. It's like, it's kind of boring. And then there's this plot twist at the end of Barry Child or Fool, Fool, Fool for Love. Both of them about incest. There's two incest things. Stop it, Sam. I mean, I'm all about art, but keep that shit to yourself. Anyways, Aaron's. Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot. I don't know. Sam, I'm Googling, like, who are the fucking best playwrights of all time, and it was him. That was cool. That was kind of punk rock in its way. It's the way it's written. I can see they were trying to do a message. It was a two-hander. Reminded me of Zoo, uh, I almost said Zoolander. Zoo story for a minute. Oh, and then I read all of Alan Ball. 
Yeah, because I did that play, Five Women Wearing the Same Dress, and I get obsessed with shit, so I read the play, but then I read six more of his fucking short plays. Yeah, I read All That I Will Ever Be, Made for a Woman, Bachelor Holiday, Power Lunch, The N-Word, Your Mother's Butt. Five Women was the best and the most substantial, and it was years before American History. No, I almost said American History X. <laughs> American Beauty. Okay, and then I read, okay, Eric Overmeyer. This teacher in New York recommended I read Native Speech. That was cool. On the Verge and then In Perpetuity Throughout the Universe. These were cool because they were kind of sci-fi in their way, you know, which is hard to put across on stage. But it was like a different kind of world, apocalyptic type shit. I don't know. It was trippy. It was weird. And then I read Eric Bogosian. Fuck, Eric Bogosian, I'm noticing, like, he acts a lot. He's in Succession. He was in Uncut Gems. And, uh, I don't know, he, uh, oh, what did he write? He wrote, wrote Suburbia, which is a great play that Richard Linklater uh, made a movie out of. And I finally got around to reading, okay, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll. And it's like a bunch of monologues. That was pretty good. That was good. That was good shit. Okay, oh, and then I read... I read a combination. I read like a bunch of plays that City Productions out in Queens asked me to read as a part of like this committee to decide what they should produce. So I read a bunch of originals and some classics. Like my buddy Jake Tamara, his play Squeal. That is an amazing play. I hope he gets that put up this year in 2024. I think he will. Um, oh, I read Shakespeare Twelfth Night because I went to go see it. Uh, I read Straight White Men by Lee Young Jean. Didn't like that. That that was a piece of shit. I read POTUS by Selena Fillinger, President of the United States. That was an amazing play. I hope I told them that's the play they should do, and I don't think they're going to because they can't get the rights to it. Uh, then Uncle Clyde's Diner or some shit by Lynn Nottage. I don't know. That was okay. I read Some Velvet Morning by Neil LeBleu. Didn't like that fucking shit. Twelve Angry Men. Oh, yeah, I like that. And, and that's a movie I need to check out. Twelve Angry Men by Reginald Rose. And if I was in New York, I think I would have auditioned for CD Productions Play, which is they're holding auditions. Oh, I'm not there to do it. I don't know. Would have been a time thing. I don't know if I could have done it. Anyways, Agatha Christie, and then there were none. Oh, that was a good little murder mystery. That was pretty good. Oh, and then Familiar Strangers by Amanda Montoni, who directed the play that I did, Five Women Wearing the Same as an original one that she pitched to them. Very good. I hope she gets. I hope she gets this made too. I don't know. I, they they haven't decided what they're making. It, I don't think. All right. Now plays I've watched. Man, I did a lot of holing up. You can go to the New York Public Library, and they have almost every play ever that's been done on Broadway. They have a, a recorded version of it because they record most all of them. And if they do, they they got a file of it. So, like, think of a play. They'll have multiple productions of the shit, and it's free. This is why I shit on those Juilliard kids all the time because their curriculum is to go to the 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 library and do this. Like you pay like a hundred grand so they can tell you, you know, it's that Goodwill hunting shit, you know, where you get the shit at the library for free. Anyways, I did it. I did the shit. So I watched Barefoot in the Park, which John Boy from the Waltons. If your parents watch that shit, he's actually on. That was dope. That was funny. It's interesting seeing, you know. And then I watched The Odd Couple with fucking Nathan Lane's version. Oh, the guy from Mouse Hunt. He's some big Broadway guy. Which is, I watched True West, the version with Philip Seymour Hoffman and uh, John C. Riley. I think I watched both versions, too. That was awesome. Philip Seymour Hoffman brings the fucking heat, man. So does John C. Riley, but Philip Seymour Hoffman fucking... Oh. It's Texas Flatland. I don't fucking know. I need to remember this shit. Okay, then I wa I watched Waiting for a Godot. Oh, that was with Nathan Lane in that again. That's cool. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Like it's it's hard to understand this shit as you go along with it, and then you read that there's like no point to it anyways. It's kind of a fucking thing about society, but the dialogue doesn't even matter. I watched it. Ah, then I watched American Buffalo. Yes, because I went. American Buffalo by, uh, who the fuck's his name? David Mamet. David Mamet, who me and him had the same uh, Meisner teacher, Bill Alderson, one of the greatest American playwrights of all time. He writes American Buffalo. 
and I watched the 2022 version with Samuel Sam Rockwell and Lawrence Fishburne and who the fuck else? I feel like there's one more, but it's at least them two, and it's great. It's cool, man. It's great. But I also watched the 1983 version with Al Pacino, but more importantly, it's got James Hayden in it. This motherfucker that was up and coming. He kind of looks like Al Pacino. He was in Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in America. And this dude, he goes up in 1983 and he does a performance of American Buffalo. And people hail it. They're like, wow, that was the like mind-blowing performance. You know, big standing ovation. Dude goes home, dies of heroin. <laughs> Bright and shining star on his way to the top, like that black tar heroin. But I went to the library and I was like, that's astounding. Do you have a copy of that performance? <laughs> and the dude was like, he told me, he goes, we don't have the full performance, but we have clips. And I'm like, I'm going to need all of them. I just need to see what someone's soul feels like. Right before it goes into the void. I don't know. Then I watched On the Verge. Oh, that's one of those Eric Overmeyer ones. That was trippy. Couldn't quite keep up with it. Ooh, I watched Other Desert Cities. Yeah, I forgot I went and watched that. Because that is one of my favorite plays I've read. It's about, it's about a, a Republican family in California. And they have different ideals about life. They got a super liberal daughter and they got a son that died years ago because he tried blowing up some like a uh, place where they tested on animals and shit anyways the play made me cry when i read it and then i watched it and it also made me cry it made me a little cry 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 baby very good that was done in 2011 okay okay and then i finally wanted to watch a copy of the zoo story because i did this shit I still haven't fully watched my version that I did, but I've never watched anybody's version of the zoo story. I've just listened to it. So I watched and motherfucking uh, Bill Pullman, the fucking the president from uh, Independence Day. He's in it. He plays uh, Peter. He plays Peter. And Jerry is played by some other like maniac that I don't fucking I, I still don't know why some fucking badass actor hasn't played Jerry yet. They they really, I need to, nobody has. I don't know. I, I think I'm the guy. Um, but I watched it, and it, this one was called Peter and Jerry because it has this prequel version that Edward Albee wrote years later. And uh, yeah, it was cool. It was fine. I don't, I didn't like, you know what? No, I didn't like it. I love this. <laughs> I'm so critical, especially on plays. So that was all the plays I watched, like, uh, you know, in digital media form. All right. Fuck, man. I watch some TV. Did anybody watch TV? I'm always so behind. Like, I watch new t television five years after it fucking comes out. So, like, here's the list. I watch Blackbird, that Taron Edgerton, Ray Liotta's last show. Paul Walter, Walter Hauser is in it. Paul Walter Hauser, I used to fucking see him at Flappers. He used to be a door guy there. And I saw him the day he quit because he started getting consistent work on that fucking MMA show, Kingdom. Paul Walter Hauser has blown the fuck up since then. He's in that Richard Jewell movie with Clint Eastwood and I, Tanya. Blackbird was cool. That was a very good show. It wasn't mind-blowing, but it was pretty cool, based on true story. Barry season 4. Oh, Barry. I'm sad that show's over. Man, this is making me sad. Look at this list. Barry, that's such a good Bill Hader, L.A. acting hitman show. Fuck. Was season four or is it five? Did, am I writing that wrong? I don't know. It's over, man. And oh, Stephen Root really showed how he's the greatest fucking actor of all time in that. Succession. I watched your fucking Succession. Spoiler alert, real quick of Succession because it's been out for years. But I'm I was late to the game, so I watched the whole thing, and I loved it. I did love it. Kieran Culkin, the whole thing. the The show is funny. Uh, spoiler alert. Yo, when Logan Roy. When Brian Cox dies, the show's over. The show's over. And for like two episodes, you're sitting there going, is the show really over? And then they have a whole nother season. Dude, I I'm appalled how that ended. I feel like 
everyone people were disagreeing create creatively or like i can't i don't know it just ended so lame the last six episodes but it was good before that um i tried watching the flash tv show because that flash movie was coming out it was fine fun background show i couldn't really like it i can't understand how people love that shit <laughs> i watched love is blind and the ultimatum and those are amazing reality fast food type shows and I'm just disappointed that, you know, there's not more of it. And I'm sure there is, but I feel, I don't know. I watched a lot of it. It's so good. Is, did he ever go to McDonald's and get a McDouble? That's what those shows are like. They're so good. <sighs> I rewatched The X-Files a little bit, a little Stranger Things. This is real casual. I watched those. Alfred Hitchcock presents. Okay, that was kind of cool. And the new interview with the vampire with Eric Bogosian. He's in that, yeah. That was that was kind of boring. I rewatched Better Call Saul just like in the background. And Invincible. Oh yeah, there's a new season of Invincible out right now. I love that's my favorite superhero cartoon right now. So that's what I did. I watched television. And I watched Jeopardy every fucking night. Yeah, yeah. Documentaries. Depp versus Heard. Oh, man. I think this is partially responsible for me and my girlfriend uh, finding our bond together. <laughs> this is good. This is on Netflix. Dude, Depp vs. Heard. That is so fucking good. I didn't even realize how good it was because I didn't keep up with pop culture as much when they were going through this shit. But dude, Johnny Depp vs. Amber Heard is so... It's like the funniest documentary ever. It's a documentary series. Oh, so funny. Watch Encounters. I've been big on my alien, you know, UFO conspiracies recently. That was that was good. That was good. What's the Arnold documentary? Wow, that guy is gay. I love it. That was a great documentary. I love Arnold. He's so gay. <laughs> I was watching this Into the Wild Frontier documentaries about real frontiersmen, Lewis and Clark and all these fucking people. That's cool. Oh, I watched Sergio Leone doc documentary. Yeah, where it just interviews a lot of, you know, Clint Eastwood and a bunch of directors that love him and worked with him. That was cool. That's as good as watching a fucking movie itself. And then Unknown Cosmic Time Machine. Yeah, that shit about the James Webb Telescope. I just watched that. That was pretty cool. That was pretty all right. That's not bad. All right. That's, wow, that's some... I had some lists. Okay, man. I think it's time for the fucking heavy hitters. It's time to quit fucking around. Because my real love in life is movies. I just fucking love watching movies. I love like, I don't know. I'll watch a bad movie. But if there's someone cool in it, like it's interesting. Or you know, I don't know. I like watching directors I love and watching their shitty movies. Or watching movies, you know, and fucking... You know, franchise are about to come out with their shit, so I pound that old shit, so. Okay, all right, is this making any sense? I'm going to try not to spend too much fucking time, and I'm just going to list every movie I watched in a home format. And I got to say, most of these, for the most part, I really sat down and watched, you know. Occasionally, you get some that are fucking, all right, I'm going to take a big, deep fucking hit of weed. And we're going to talk about Scream 5. I watched Scream 5 because fucking Scream 6 was coming out in theaters. <laughs> it's bad, the fuck ass. I watched Creed 2, Rocky 3, Clerks. <laughs> we got to watch Clerks every fucking year for the rest of my life. I love Kevin Smith. Chasing Amy Dogma. Why was I watching Clerk so much? I don't know. I just felt like it, I guess. Uh, the Departed. Watched that all the time. American Beauty. Alan Ball, as I was saying. Uncle Frank. Oh, it's also Alan Ball. The Big Sleep. Oh, I was, running to, I was watching Humphrey Bogart movies because I was doing his voice for the play. To Have and Have Not. I don't know. <clears throat> Batman versus Superman. I must have just been drunk and bored. Cowboy Way with Woody Harrelson. Michael Sachs told me to watch that shit. 
Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2. Oh, because 3 was coming out. Contact. I love Contact. I only watch it every two years. Jodie Foster, that's a good movie. 300. Why did I watch? Oh, I must have been into some Roman shit. I was trying to get into the Roman Empire. Cleopatra. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was doing history. Can't hardly wait. <laughs> Who watches a double feature of Cleopa- Cleopatra followed by fucking Can't Hardly Wait? Like, what the fuck is this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this so I'm fucking not cranking my neck. Superman Returns. Oh, I was watching DC because Flash was coming out. That's right. Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. These are fun. Supergirl. Oh, Supergirl is a good one. That's a silly one, but it has cool visual effects. I forgot I really love that. Superman 3. Splash. The Little Mermaid. That was great. Yeah, that's right. What's the fucking doing? Okay, what else? Okay, then I watched Dazed and Confused. It's summertime. I can tell. I go in order. Dazed and Confused. It must have been like back to fucking school or school's getting out movie time. Okay, then Black Hawk Down. Oh, war movie time. It must have been June or July. That's when I turn it up. When it's fucking after Flag Day, I'm like, get the guns out, baby. Black Hawk Down, The Thin Red Line, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Nope. Nope was awesome, man. I didn't see it in theaters. I'm glad I saw it. Interstellar, Bottle Rocket, Rushmore, The French Dispatch, Knocked Up, Selma, Malcolm X. Still summer, it must be, because I'm watching Apocalypse now. Watch that every fucking July. Fuck yeah. I get so pumped about Martin Sheen breaking his hand. <laughs> Jaws, Peter Pan. Jaws is a great 4th of July movie. Peter Pan, Hook, Armageddon, Pearl Harbor, Inglorious Bastards, Independence Day, Forrest Gump, Wet Hot American Summer, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I do not like Indiana Jones movies. We'll get to that later. Mission Impossible 3. JJ, Mission Impossible Fallout. Are you in or are you out? I love Tom Cruise. That's my dad. A goofy movie. Ooh, I must have been in a summer mood. Yeah. Then following. Yeah, I was watching Christopher Nolan movies. That's what it was for Oppenheimer. Batman Begins. The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight Rises. Memento. Insomnia. I was pounding Nolan. Piranha, Jurassic Park, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Tenet, The Prestige. Christopher Nolan, 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 Nolan. I be Nolan, 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 Nolan. Christopher Nolan, 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 Nolan. Inception. Christopher Nolan, Nolan, Nolan. All right. I think from then on, it's movies I've watched in Michigan slash Indiana, which, uh, Sometimes puts a damper on the old internet connection. But, and I'm watching more movies on TV at my folks' house. The Long Long Trailer. Oh, that was a good one about people buying a fucking trailer. Dude, it's very relatable. It's a 60s movie or some shit. It's relatable to this day. The Champ. Yeah, that old boxing movie. Okay, then back to school season. Yeah, because I watched Disturbing Behavior. The Faculty. Clueless. And I watched There Will Be Blood because that's just the fucking most badass movie of all time. I talk about it all the time. The Notebook. Yeah, is that fall, end of summer. Yeah. Varsity Blues, The Wedding Singer. Yeah, oh yeah, it's wedding season. Me, yeah, my girlfriend was taking me to weddings. We're watching weddings some shit. All right. Oh, and then Sci-Fi September hit. I am a fucking monthist, man, till, till I die. And... I insist to break up the Halloween season. You watch sci-fi movies in September. And here's my list. Here's what I pounded. War of the Worlds, Starship Troopers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Days of Thunder. That's not a sci-fi. That's a fucking real fucking movie, man, featuring my dad. Oh, it must have been my birthday. That's when I watched that. Men in Black, Minority Report, The Big Lebowski, another birthday movie. Joker. I don't know why I watched that. I must have been feeling it. Rise of the Ninja Turtles, the movie. War of the Worlds, AI. AI is better than I remember it. That's a cool one. Passed off from Stanley Kubrick to Steven Spielberg. The Batman. I've seen that a few times now. That's pretty good. It gets a little worse the more I watch. Not worse, but like less. It gets longer the more I watch it. I'll put it that way. Boogie Nights, 
Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which I'd never seen before, I think. Interesting. Signs. Great. M. Night Shyamalan, a ding dong. All right. That can't be it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, okay, I said Scream. I'm like, that. why were we at the beginning? Scream 1. Okay, here's the fucking October list. October, Halloween time, man. I get obsessed. I admittedly watch too many movies this time of year, and I try to tell myself every like every year, watch less movies. Quantity over... No, quality over quantity. Fuck, I fucked myself up. Give me ma, give me ma. Like Britney Spears. Give me ma, give me ma, give me ma. <laughs> all right. Here's all the fucking Halloween movies I watched. I watched Scream, Scary Movie, Donnie Darko, The Wolfman, 1941. Trick or Treat, Pulp Fiction, Halloween Ends, Jigsaw, Scream 2, Scream 3, John Carpenter's Vampires, Body Bags, Coneheads, Frankenhooker, Silver Bullet, Creep Show, Invisible Invaders, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1922 version, The Blair Witch Project, Beetlejuice, Friday the 13th, Renfield, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Critters, Frankenstein. And that's only half of them for October, Jackals. Silence of the Lambs, Joyride, Dracula AD, 1972. I didn't realize how funny that shit was. Book of Shadows, The Blair Witch 2. Don't watch it. Now, watch it. Watch it. It's bad. Eraserhead, that movie fucked me in the butt. What the fuck? David Cronenberg, is that who fucking? I don't know, but it's fucked. Richard Linklater recommended that movie. The guy that made Before Sunset, fucking... Fuck off. Blair Witch. The new 2016 Blair Witch one. I can't remember if it was good or bad. or I think it was bad. I don't know. Tex Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Gen. That has Matthew McConaughey and fucking uh, Renee Zellweger in it. The Lost Boys. Dr. Sleep. The Monster Squad. Van Helsing. Boring. As boring as I ever thought it was going to be. But it has him fighting Frankenstein. That's kind of cool. Scary Movie 2, The Shining. Scary Movie 3 is the funniest movie of all time. Disturbia. There's darkness in the light. Bum, bum, beat him. Hannibal, Bride of Frankenstein. Halloween Town, It. Son of Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. I watch, like, all the Frankensteins because I was Frankenstein for Halloween this year. Yeah. So fucking... That's why I did it. Scream 4. Cursed, Lone Wolf. Dude, my girlfriend had never seen the Scream movies before. And she knew about them. But she didn't know there was six fucking sequels. And so I was, like, surprising her. And every time I fucking turned on a new Scream movie, like, she's like, a fucking another one? Because I wouldn't tell. I'd be like, oh, you got to figure it out. And a couple times I sprinkled in, like, a scary movie to throw her off the scent. You know what I mean? And, dude, we're watching Scream 4, and then we watched Scream 5, which was the last one, and she was like, what the fuck? She liked him. She liked him. That's why she's my girl. Uh, Cursed, Lone Wolf, Werewolf of London, The Video Dead, The Vich. Very good. Oh, there's more. I was only a third through the fucking list. Young Frankenstein, Dawn of the Dead, Frank and Weenie, The Addams Family, Halloween 2, Invaders from Mars, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Psycho. Death Proof, Scream 5, Mean Girls, Big Daddy, that's a Halloween movie technically, Halloween, E.T., Bride of Chucky, The Ninth Gate, Evil Dead 2, Psycho 2, Halloween 2018 version, Scream 6. Oh yeah, because that's out on video. Yeah, we did watch that. Our Edward Scissorhands. That's the last one we watched, which is technically a Christmas movie. But, hey, it's actually a Halloween movie. They have a Halloween scene in it, too. So who am I butt-fucking? Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin 316 says, I just fucked your ass. All right. This list thing is getting ridiculous. This is this, I'm reminding myself what the fucking new year should be, as always. And it's like, less is more, motherfucker. Less is more. All right. November.
I watch westerns, baby. I watch El Dorado, John Wayne fucking movie, Apache Territory, Apache, Geronimo. These are a bunch of fucking brown-faced white guys like Chunk Connor, I think, is in Geronimo. It's offensive. Movie's not bad. The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. And the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, State of Play, Hell or High Water, Wind River, Bone Tomahawk, High Noon, Django Unchained, Young Guns, Walk the Line, The Hateful Eight, Young Guns 2. Young Guns 2 ain't bad. Actually, Young Guns 2, pretty fucking good. It's weird in parts, but it's pretty good. And you can see Emilio Estevez's ass in it, so fuck you. Then December dramas and Christmas movies. All righty. Not quite my tempo. I watched Whiplash, Uncut Gems, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Honey Boy. Honey Boy's amazing. I don't care if it's a fabrication of his life. It's still good. Good Will Hunting, Yo Jimba, Duck You Sucker, or A Fistful of Dynamite, Bad Santa, My Girlfriend Didn't Like It, I'm Breaking Up With Her, Goodfellas, The Two Jakes, Star Wars, Seven, Force Awakens, still an amazing movie. The ninth one's fucking terrible, though. Ruins it a little bit. The Shooting, A Christmas Carol, Jim Carrey's version. Eh, it's interesting. I'd rather just see it in full live version, though. Blade Runner, 2049, perfect sequel. Fred Claus, Mad Max, Fury Road, Appaloosa, Shutter Island, sucks. Leave the World Behind. Oh, that was a terrible Netflix movie you just watched. It wasn't terrible. It just it could it felt like it was supposed to be good and it wasn't. Bad Santa 2, Babylon is really good. Star Wars 77. Miracle on 34th Street, the 47 version. Weird. I don't think I just chill out, dude. Quit telling everyone you're Santa, even if you are. Bad Santa 2, Babylon, Star Wars 77, Miracle on 34th Street, Slow West, La La Land, Fat Man, Once Upon a Time in America, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, Jerry Maguire, The Grinch, Catch Me If You Can, Home Alone 2, Just Friends, which is my new favorite Christmas movie, by the way, I had no idea how funny it was in that fucking it was a Christmas movie, and A Christmas Story, I watched like all day on Christmas, they were playing a million fucking billion Time's over. I guess the, the last movie I watched in its entirety was Saltburn, that new one with uh, Barry Keogh, whatever. It's about his dick flying around and shit. And I don't know. It wasn't bad. It wasn't. It was kind of just, I don't know. That's, that's the last one. I don't think I wrote that down, but that's on the fucking list. Oh, I watched so many fucking movies. I don't even know what to say about all that. I'm like, what was my favorite? What was my whatever? How do I feel about it? As always, I try and watch like movies that are new to me, but I do have a theme of watching movies I have seen. <laughs> and I don't know about that. I watch new shit. Like I watch a lot of uh uh the fucking Bottle Rocket, Rushmore director, his movies I hadn't seen, like French Dispatch Wes Anderson, I saw his movies. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I do know that uh that was a long ass fucking list and in, in reflection, I don't know. Good good thing I didn't list all the fucking porn I watch, you know? Because it'd be furries and cucks, right? Uh, all right, now I think we're on to the fucking big dick list. Yeah. Yeah, now it's time for movies and theaters. I think I saw 36 movies in theaters. 35, 36, only she 5'3". And I will give my favorite of these. I will give out an award for the favorite fucking movie I saw. And pretty much all these movies, I think all them, except for like a couple with like my mom, girlfriend. I think Rishi went with me with one. My niece went with me with one. Most, dude, <laughs> Jordy Boy sees fucking movies by himself. And that's the reason why there's such a long list, okay? Because uh, I see a hand, I see a lot of bad, a bad ones. I'm here to talk shit about the ones I don't like. And I can't do that to someone else. You know, I don't like taking a friend, someone I care about, and wasting their time. But I will do it to myself. So I see all the fucking movies, man. Starting with one that shouldn't have been made. Women Talking. Bad movie. That was the first movie I saw. God, that was boring. It was so... It was nominated for awards. Bad Banshees of Inishirin, that Colin Farrell movie. That was pretty boring. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Tar. 
Kate Blanchett. That I don't know. It was it was cool, but it kind of sucked. It's yeah, like it was funny when she was making fun of everyone for being politically correct. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'll knock at the cabin. M Night Shyamalan's new one. Oh man, I can't even remember what happened in that. I couldn't have been too drunk in that. I think it was just boring. I saw Megan. It was about like a killer doll. It's like female Chucky. It was all right. It was, right. was kind of funny. Uh, Avatar 2. Cinematic spectacle. I had to tell the guy to fix the 3D, but it worked. Uh, Scream 6. Ooh. I'll just tell you right now. Scream 6 is an early front runner for fucking movie of the year I saw in theaters. Woo. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Sorry, fucking Jonathan Majors. Dude, he had his come up that and Creed 3 back to back, dude. I thought I, I still think he's an amazing actor, but doubt he's going to ever act again on the silver screen. Maybe. 65, all that shitty Adam Driver future dinosaurs movie. I was so bored, I kept going to the slushy machine and just filling it up during this fucking movie. Cocaine Bear. Oh, that's one of Ray Liotta's last films. That movie sucked. Dog Leg. Yeah, my friend Ad, Al Warren. He came to New York and he had a, a premiere of that. Dog Leg's great. Look, if you, if you can, look up Dog Leg. Look up Al Warren. He Al was just in Nicolas Cage's last movie. Dude, Dog Leg is good. It's about his dog being lost. It's a good independent filmmaker story. Super Mario Bros. movie. I was high out of my mind for that. I think it was an empty theater. I think I waited a week, too. Didn't go to opening night, but I still caught it on a Dolby. You know what I mean? High, high, high with Mario and Luigi. Not bad. That wasn't bad. It was actually a very good movie. Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 3. Very good. Very solid. Rocket Raccoon Story. Amazing. I wouldn't say amazing movie. Just They're all good. All those Gardens movies are good. Bo is Afraid. This is up for movie of the year. This is Ari Aster, the guy that made um, Midsummer and uh, Hereditary. This got Joaquin Phoenix. And I, it's just a journey, man. I don't even know how to say it. It's like a guy that lives in a really shitty place and his journey of going from shit to more shit. And it's weird and it's funny as fuck. And he's afraid of sex. And <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> then I saw the new Fast and the Furious movie. And I haven't seen the last three or four or whatever, but I went to the fucking theater. I think it was like opening night too. And I went to the badass shit and uh, fast X was great. It was so stupid. It was, Oh, it was like intensely over the top. It's they're They're making Sharknado now and that's cool, man. But it is plot wise. It's so the sci-fi channel level of, it's great. It's pretty insane to see it in the theater, man. Jason Momoa was pretty funny in it, too. And I didn't think he was a good actor before this movie. That's how f- much Fast and Furious fucked me up. I think Jason Momoa is a good actor now because of that movie. All right. Then I watched The Little Mermaid, which I've got my gripes about that because it was actually a great movie. And I hate English guys, but I couldn't even hate this English guy because he was that charming. And... They took the big tits out of the Little Mermaid, and they gave them. They let Miss Melissa McCarthy keep them for the octopus lady, and I think that's offensive. I don't know why they took her big Little Mermaid tits away. Whatever. Then I watched Spider Man across the across the Spider Verse. Amazing movie, made me cry. Those are so fucking well done. I love Spider Man. Everything about him. I saw Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. Transformers is back, baby. That was. I don't care if you got Pete Davidson doing some fucking robot voice. Like, the movie's good. It's funny. It's back to form. They're not that hard to make. You guys went really off the rails there for a while, but... All right, then I saw The Flash. Flash was good. It was kind of shitty, though, too, and Michael Keaton's good, but... And that's great. Hey, all the cameos are... All those cameos were great. I don't know if fucking Flash Boy... What's his name? What the fuck's his name? You know what? I'm glad I don't fucking remember it. He's getting canceled for beating everyone up in Hawaii, I guess. And I saw Asteroid City, Wes Anderson movie. 
I'm going to have to rewatch that. Can't really remember what the fuck happened because it's Wes Anderson. And it's crazy plot with a bunch of cameos. <laughs> oh, I saw the blackening. Honestly, I didn't fucking finish this movie. I was kind of ch- checked out. I think I, just, I think I walked back into Spider-Man across the the Spider-Verse. I think I was bored. And I was like, let's catch the fucking early, early train. Did. Yeah. Then I saw Indiana Jones. I don't like Indiana Jones. I think I definitely took six beers into the theater for this for an afternoon screening, and I could not enjoy it. But then I saw Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, and I also, this is a sneak some beer into the movie theater type play thing. And I love Tom Cruise. God, fuck. That's a candidate. It's like Bo is Afraid, Mission Impossible, and Scream 6 are up there, man. Dog Lake, too. Why not? All right. Then Past Lives. Oh, yeah, that fucking Asian movie about the people that grew up together and then they grew up differently and they wonder if they should have fucking been together and it's all timely. And that shit made me ball my balls out. Ugh. Fuck that shit. I'm like, I don't need that. I don't need that. It's so good. It should win Best Picture, but I don't need that shit. Mm. Theater Camp. That's a great movie. That's a funny ass movie. It kind of reminded me of uh, like Best in Show. Or what's the other one? Yeah, Best in Show. Barbie. I saw Barbie. I saw Barbie twice. I saw it in fucking L.A. and as I'm fucking picking my nose on the podcast, I'm getting so tired. I saw it in L.A. and I saw it with my mom and my niece, and it's great. It's weird. It's cool. I don't know. It's like a Marvel movie in a way. It's kind of like a this. It's such a pop culture movie. It's like its own cinematic fucking thing. Not to talk shit. I don't know. It's great. I don't. I don't know. I liked it more than Oppenheimer. I saw Oppenheimer. I didn't like it. I don't know. Maybe I need to rewatch it and, I, and I'll like get the stick at. I'll get the atom bomb out of my ass. <laughs> I didn't like it, and I see, and I love Downey, and I see Downey's probably going to be nominated for Best Supporting Actor, and I'm like, his is the most boring part of the fucking movie. Why don't they show more of the atom bomb? You pussies. <laughs> That's what Truman said to Oppenheimer at the end. <laughs> Get that crime baby out of here. All right. Then I saw TMNT, Mutant Mayhem. Oh, yeah, animated. They, they went Spider-Verse on the shit. That was fucking great. Then I saw Saw X, and I haven't been watching the Saw movies, and I got to say, this one hit. Saw X and Fast X. Uh, the X's. X's in the franchise, good movies. I, I don't know, but, but, you know. Losing steam. Killers of the Flower Moon. Scorsese. The Marvels. Thanksgiving, oh yeah, that's like the best Thanksgiving horror movie of all time. And Napoleon, we're fucking, Napoleon doesn't speak French, <laughs> as I've reiterated before, Joaquin Phoenix. Those are the lists. Okay, I'm going to make this short and sweet. What was the best movie I watched in theaters? What was the most fun and best movie I watched in theaters? Early candidates right off the bat are Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Dog Leg, Bo is Afraid, Scream 6, Avatar 2, Ooh. that is a tough one. Mission Impossible was good. Spider-Man was good. But I think it comes down to Avatar and Scream for me. And Bo is Afraid. Those are my three. And I'm going to put it down to Scream 6. Okay. Now I'll say Bo is Afraid because... It's an indie movie. It's a weird fucking story. You can't believe how good it is. You can't believe the story you're watching as you're watching it. It's weird. It's artsy. It's funny. It's dark. That's cool. Avatar 2 is like a fucking cinematic spectacle, especially with the 3D when you're in theaters, dude. 
it you're really like this is the innovation at the highest level but scream six yeah that one was the best movie i saw in theaters this year yeah spoil alerts for screams but dude that shit the continuation of uh fucking billy loomis you know the ghost of billy loomis haunting Melissa Barrera, who they just fired over the fucking Gaza fucking shit for having an opinion about the world. By the way, she's not bringing her back for Screen 7. Oh, that'll be a whole nother podcast. But, dude, Scream 6. Between the cameos, you know, it's the best sixth installment of any movie you've ever seen, number one. And it's, ah, it's it was just so good. And there was a lot of, you know, there was good blood. It was funny. It was funny. It was good blood, good twists and turns. It was a real who done it. You wondered who the fuck done it, man. The whole wiggity waggity. Uh lovely time. Scream six. You get the uh, award for best best fucking movie. Those are my those are my awards, yeah. Fuck yeah. What else, man? What should I say? That twenty twenty four. I said it. Before I say it again, if fucking we don't get Deadpool three, I will just wait until twenty twenty five. Hope you have good news, Eve. Hope you don't get a DUI. Don't get a DUI. Don't end up in jail. Actually, don't go anywhere. Everyone, stay put, New Year's Eve. Just pretend it's fucking first day of COVID. Stay inside. Get plenty of booze. Stay inside. I urge all of you. To watch When Harry Met Sally, About a Boy, Four Rooms, Ghostbusters 2, Forrest Gump, Godfather Part 2, Oceans 2, Oceans 11, I almost said Oceans 2, <laughs> Phantom Thread, Rent, Boogie Nights, The Time Machine, don't watch Rent, Rent sucks, I don't give a shit what you do, don't try and work out on January 1st, you fucking idiots, you're not gonna, there's no point, you should have started already, don't fucking, don't put all that pressure on yourself and go and... You know there's going to be a bunch of people that have been jacked since fucking July. So don't do that to yourself, okay? Just keep drinking and eating like shit. Just keep drinking and eating like shit. Waiting for things to get better. And they won't, you fart knockers. Happy New Year.